Now, someone says here, what, at what point is a no, motion of no confidence in the government worthy? Why is this not discussed? Roger, it's not discussed because Labor and the Greens have a majority. So any vote of no confidence would not be passed, mate. They are in, they were elected in, and they're in till the next election, but um, not withstanding any strange changes they might make to the Electoral Act, we got an election coming in a year or so, just under a year. Sean, are we waking up or are we going to let our country and freedom slip through our fingers? Well, we're talking about this. I note, um, I think, some mainstream media coverage of it. Um, finally, after a couple of days, it's a huge issue. It is a huge issue. Uh, and it comes on top of the farce of our parliamentary process that the Five Waters legislation has become. A meaningless select committee process, much of it passed under urgency, and now a sly, secretive attempt to entrench non-privatisation of water. You know what that'll mean, iwi and hapu control of water, because that's under the treaty, that's different. Um, so really, I, I think an outrage, and one that... We, what do we do? First instance, I guess, you go to Labor and the Greens and you say, don't do something this silly. Don't do something this silly. What might our opposition pol political parties do uh, about this? Well, we are joined now um, by Paul Goldsmith uh, from the National Party. Paul, what hat do you have on in regards to this matter? Oh, well, look, look, we'll be... Uh trying to persuade the government uh, when Parliament sits again next week uh, to uh, send this bill back to the committee stage and, and fix this, uh, because it, it is a, a kind of a, a, a new way of doing things which would be very detrimental to the country, um, trying to handcuff future governments on basic policy uh, debates. It's not something we've ever done before. It's a, um, a novelty and they need to uh, pull back from the rink. Do you think it was done with serious sly intent or with naive ignorance, Paul? Uh, no, yes, I think it's serious sly intent. Uh, they they uh, tried to sneak it through, uh, and, um, which, is, which is really quite uh, unforgivable, frankly, that to... to, to um, uh, uh, as I think uh, during an urgency when we've got about 20 other bills on, uh, you can slip something like this through and nobody will notice uh, it is, a, it is um, you know, quite wrong. Perhaps in a kind of childish uh, student politics kind of way, they were hoping to uh, get a reaction out of us and spark a big debate about privatisation of water. Well, that's just nonsense. It's, it's not on the table, is it? Yeah, it's trying to manufacture an argument out of something that doesn't exist. But, you know, that's what they try and do. They try and distract uh, from the real issues, try and get a little fight going on over there, when really what they're doing is the government is seizing uh, community-owned assets for, uh, to, put, to put into a new... So, so it's, you know, it's, it's a very um, uh, kind of adolescent kind of approach to politics uh, about something which is very, very serious. And so... Uh, our simple message is don't go fiddling around with our constitutional um, practices uh, and uh, get, get this back into a normal, that's normal your method. Kind of that's your message, Paul. But in reality, because of the strange outcome of the last election, they could do this. <coughs> uh, yes, they, yes, they could. And uh, I suppose the other element to it is um, it would be very odd, and I think it would... Uh, reflect very badly on the government if, if they start approach, um, start trying to entrench legislation. It, it makes the obvious point that they have very little confidence they're going to get re-elected the next year, uh, and uh, they're trying to sort of uh, uh, um, secure their legacy before they get thrown out. Uh, unfortunately, I think that would just hasten the, <laughs> and um, uh, increase the severity of them being thrown out next year because New Zealanders won't put up with it. They're not going to be. Um, uh, put up with a, a government that is trying to, um, you know, fiddle around with our constitutional yeah. arrangements. And but why Paul, if they the do entrench the prohibition on privatisation, yeah, um, it's unlikely 
It is highly unlikely that Act and National or Act and New Zealand First or New Zealand First Act and National are going to have 60% of the seats in well, Parliament next election. Yes. So we're stuck with it forevermore. Uh, well, uh, yeah, look, I mean, the, the issue of privatisation is something that nobody's interested in yeah. anyway. But, but I'm saying uh, the, we're stuck with the entrenchment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, it's not quite as clear as that, uh, actually. It's a little bit muddied uh, it, uh, um, in the sense that any bill that government passes, um, we could um, pass a bill that repeals that broader bill, uh, and it's not 100% clear just yeah. how that would work in practice. Uh, Parliament is sovereign, it can do what it likes, uh, the idea of the the, the entrenched provisions is, is, is a is a um, is a convention in the sense that uh, y y y Parliament could actually unwind it, but it would look very um, uh, uh, very dodgy if they were doing it on a on a electoral law matter. Mm. Uh, and that it, it's more the. Um, it seems uh, to me. It play. seems to me there is a way the game is played. It is a vicious, nasty game. Politics quite often. It is incredibly yeah. tribal and feral, Paul. But there are basic rules and that is entrenchment is only used for certain That's constitutional right. reasons and it is basically saying we need a super majority of 75 percent or more i.e both major parties uh, yep. which some might argue about minor parties might argue about and it seems to me labor and the greens have just gone and broken those long-standing rules and if you break the rules you get chaos you do that's right, uh, and 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 it comes on a pattern of moving away from our kind of conventions. I mean, the, the big one that we've talked about a lot, of course, is moving away from equal voting rights. They've done that. Uh, they've done a whole lot of uh, stuff, which is uh, making people right to ask the question: Well, what 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 is the, what are they, what are they actually playing at? Why are they shifting uh, the country away from uh, democratic conventions that we've upheld and have served us well for many years? Why are they doing this? Uh, and uh, so that's uh, making a lot of people un uneasy. We, we certainly will uh, restore uh, the, the normal practices that we have and will assert equal voting rights and we'll do all those things because that's what's made New Zealand strong and uh, we're not going to um, put up with any of this. Yeah. Is your leader uh, equally outraged by this? Yes, indeed. We're all we're all annoyed by it, uh, uh, and um, if, you know it's just a part and pass, part and parcel of uh, the, the whole three waters uh, debate. Has been a, a, a very unedifying one, uh, where they're just trying to ram through stuff that nobody wants. Uh, and um, each kind of month, uh, they come up with a new um, twist on, on <laughs> how bad it can get. And this is the latest uh, that they're going to try and. Uh, handcuff the next government over one issue in cahoots with the Greens. Uh, the Greens are uh, always sort of smiley and cuddly and look friendly, but actually they're not remotely interested in, in maintaining the, the, the kind of conventions that have uh, well, been... Well, democracy. Let's not that interested yes. in democracy, Paul. No, Paul. no, not remotely when it comes to equal voting rights, no. Yeah. Paul Goldsmith, I thank you very much indeed um, for joining us this morning. That is uh, National List MP Paul Goldsmith. Also, they're just a spokesperson. Um, well, there we go. I've laid out the story for you. A government that is deciding to bind future governments not on constitutional matters that are generally agreed on, but on specific policy points. And if we start doing that, we live in a very strange world where governments rule with absolute power and while they are in government, they rule like dictators. Uh, there is a reason that Westminster democracy works, it actually does require compromise. Even if you are the government of the day and you want to implement a policy or a public program, you do need to have some kind of buy-in from the opposition, from those who might govern after you. The core of public policy is generally agreed on. The nuances, perhaps in the degrees of public policy, are those things we vote for. They are the differentials in a democratic system. But you cannot say we vote for dictators every three years because eventually one of those dictators you vote for will take away your right to vote and then you are stuffed. And this is why our constitu constitutional lawyers like Graham Egler are very concerned about this, as I believe all New Zealanders should be very concerned.